Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, so as you can see from the title page and as I mentioned last week, this week's episode of the show will be a review of the latest Series 7 releases from uh, North Star Spirits. So, and um, as you can also see from the title page, Ian has decided this time to release both uh, a Spicker and a Vega bottling. So, um, there was lots of interest in those, but you know, uh, it shouldn't detract from the fact that <laughs> he's bottled some other stuff as well. It's not all about those two particular um, blends, uh, and uh, although that you know, they do seem to have been uh, uh, have captured the uh, the whiskey buying public's imagination for some reason or other. I wonder why that is. Maybe it's because they were good. Anyway, um, it's I guess from a sort of from my personal opinion, I, I, I think it's really, really interesting that, that these kind of forgotten casks are now kind of having their moment, shall we say. I mean, um, I'm guessing that a lot of these blends or, or vattings were kind of put together by sort of previous distillery managers. Maybe they had uh, something in mind they wanted to do. Maybe they then moved on. Um, and that and that project never came, kind of came to fruition. New distillery manager comes in, maybe wants to make some changes, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and um, and these cars were probably shuffled off back into a, a warehouse and promptly forgotten about. And um, I guess about ten years or so ago, they they had very little intrinsic value to to anybody, to be honest with you. But um, I guess with independent bottling companies now looking for value for money, these casks have now suddenly become quite desirable. Um, a number of them have, have obviously got some, some serious age, and I would guess that in relative terms to, say, a single malt of a sim similar kind of age, they're still pretty... <laughs> not inexpensive because it's still going to be relatively expensive but I would guess you can see what I'm getting at basically if it was a single malt 29 year old single malt uh, from a well-known distillery uh, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg one of these sort of vatted casks probably not quite so much so um, so basically you're getting uh, a mature spirit for you know a fraction of the price you know and at the end of the day we've long moved beyond this kind of um, blinkered approach to blends and, and vatted whiskies, and really we're now in that sort of that that moment in time where we're, we're quite happy to sort of taste anything and just basically determine whether the quality is good or not. It doesn't have to be a single malt uh, uh, these days whatsoever. Um, so I think yeah, I think it's well, I wouldn't say kind of renaissance times in the, the the whiskey industry, but it's a good it's a good time to be in the whiskey industry. I think so. Anyway. Not a great deal to say about North Star as I've done. Ooh, um, uh, this will be my seventh episode on North Star. Funny that, isn't it? Um, so <laughs> really, not a great deal to say whatsoever. Apart from, let's just take a look at today's line. Right. Okay. So we're going to kick off with the twelve-year-old from one of my favourite distilleries. Yes, that was sarcasm. Uh, it's a 12-year-old feta can. Ooh, sharp intake of breath there. Um, so this was distilled in October of 2006. All of these were bottled in February of this year. Uh, a single bourbon barrel uh, bottled at 57.4%. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, he's already dismissed it because he hates feta can. Well, I don't hate feta can. That's, that's far too... I'm not... That's far too sort of strong. Um, I find a lot of feta can, as you well know, hard work. But in actual fact, I'd, prob I'd probably like to sort of come across these more often than not to see whether you, I've got the, the diamond in the rough, so to speak. Um, and we shall see when we get round to tasting that, whether it is a diamond or whether it's something else. Um, <laughs> the second bottle we were looking at is uh, a 12 year old Orkney. Now uh, this it was distilled in uh, January of 2007 and bottled at 55.5 percent. Now Ian hasn't told me what Orkney distillery it comes from but unlike Speyside when you have a Speyside whiskey there's tons of the damn distilleries. There's not quite so many on Orkney so uh, narrowing it down to sort of uh, which one it is is a little bit easier shall we say but like I said I don't actually know which distillery that comes from um, so uh, we'll taste it and we'll we'll, we'll have a, a stab shall we. Um, 
Right, we're going to jump up in age a little bit because we're going to do the uh, the blend, uh, not the blend, sorry, the uh, the single grain before we hit the, the sherry. Um, so this is a 31 year old in the Gordon, distilled in 1987, bottled in February, and um, at the not not small alcohol percentage of 63.2. So damn, that cask was tighter than an axe chuff, as they say. So. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. I have uh, have the, the water, and hopefully I will probably manage to keep some, so I can put a little drop of water there, because I think that's probably going to need it. Um, then we're going to move on to the ones that you really want to know about. So we're going to do the uh, the, the blended malt first, uh, the blended the blended whiskey first. Sorry, uh, the Spicker. Uh, this was distilled sometime in uh, 1989. Uh, it's 29 years old and was bottled at 45. Point percent now um, as I said I believe that these it was a obviously a parcel bought uh, pre-blended and I'm guessing because it's been aged in American oak and European oak I'm guessing sherry of some form or description that Ian has basically finished it in in sherry casks uh, I don't know for definite but I'm just having a bit of a, a wild stab in the dark on that one lots of stabbing in the dark going on today isn't it um, and another step in the dark would be the Vega. So this is um, uh, 28 years old, distilled in September of 1990. Again, aged in American oak and um, I think it's uh, Hoggies in actual fact, and XPX casks. So again, I think probably what Ian's done is bought the, the, the blend, um, or the vatting, should we say in this case, uh, in American oak and has transferred it into px casks and uh, i'm guessing judging by the fact there's a thousand bottles of the spicker and uh, 800 bottles of the vega i'm guessing two to three sort of casks probably maybe a little bit more of the spicker I, I would guess maybe sort of around about four um or maybe even five judging by the, the age but again another one <laughs> stab in the dark but anyway so that's um today's little lineup let's um kick off with a bit of Better right, okay, so all oh, prejudices put aside. Yes, honestly, really. Uh, no, seriously. Let's, let's see what those give us. Well, by Fetter Cairn standards, that is actually pretty clean. Um, there's no burning tyres, there's no sulphur, there's no, you know. Um, horrendous character um it's a little bit hard it's a little bit subdued possibly um there's some barley there's there's even a little bit of, of apricotty fruit as well which is oh, surprising uh, to say the least um it's a nice creamy oak kind of coming through as well um you know i think I mean, you're never going to get away from the fact that sort of, you know, Feta Cairn is one of those more industrial styles. But, you know, I think it's got it's got plenty of other thing, other aromas certainly there to kind of, you know, give it some balance. And it's, you know, it's certainly not the worst Feta Cairn I've ever tasted in my entire life. Um, see what the pants like then, shall we? Got a bit of grip on the finish, but then obviously that's the car strength. Um, it's relatively straightforward, it's clean. Um, the barley is a little bit industrious, a little bit hard, but there's plenty of softening American oak. Um, yeah, it's not kind of earth shattering in its complexity. There's a little bit of green fruit on the aftertaste, a little bit of almost kind of gooseberry. Um, so, um, yeah, let's uh, put a little drop of water with that and see what, uh, what happens next. Um, those is like now. Certainly brought out the oils, the natural oils in the spirit. It's it's still a little bit subdued. Um, it's maybe brought forward the, the, the oak a little bit more as well. Um, it's a it's a, a lot simpler now. It's essentially sort of oak and um, a little bit of spirit character. It's yeah, it's again, it's it's okay. Um, 
it's still certainly very clean. Oh, hang on, got a little touch of tangerine there. Just a fleeting moment of tangerine. Um, hmm. See all the parts right now. Like the, like the nose, it's a little bit simpler, if it could get simpler. Um, the oak is a little bit more noticeable, a little bit more creamier. A little insubstantial, but you know, it's got some pleasant barley character, um, which is less industrial now. I've kind of put a little drop of water with it. Um, and yeah, it's pleasant. Um, you know, can't, can't kind of argue with that, it has to be said. So let's move on to the Orkney. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, that's lovely. Um, really exuberant, juicy, fruity, vibrant, barley, apricot. Oh, that is that, that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it kind of makes you, you think, why is the Highland Park 12 year old such a so, so crap? You know, it's obvious that they are producing some lovely spirit. I mean, I'm, again, guessing that it's Highland Park. Um, there's a little bit of coastal notes. There's a um, touch of earth, some salinity. Um, but, oh, that is just wonderfully juicy and wonderfully fruity. You know, in that sort of kind of arony kind of way. Um, although it's not as tropical as, say, something like Aran. Um, it's certainly wonderfully juicy. And there's a... A little bit of a little bit of peach smoke, just a, a waft in the background. Um, I mean, when I put my uh, my offer out to to, to the, uh, the the North Star customers, nobody nobody put their name down on a bottle of this, and <laughs> you are going to miss out if you don't. I mean, this is absolutely superb. Um, and considering this is going to retail at what what am I, what am I punting out about fifty fifty eight fifty nine quid? Considering how much a 12 year old distillery bottling is, um, damn. Hmm. Let's see what the pause like. Hmm. Voluptuous, juicy, fruity, apricots, barley. Touch of pear, touch of salt, a little bit of pea on the finish. I mean, that is just absolutely fantastic. Lovely, lovely progression. Um, Peat though is actually sort of increasing in its intensity, certainly on the aftertaste. A um, little bit of spice, little bittering right on the very end, but you know, nothing to sort of, you know, get bent out of shape about. Uh, it's certainly got plenty of. Um, of fruit, a little bit of oak, you know, all kind of like balances up and it just finishes it off quite nicely. I don't really think it needs a little drop of water, but um, I am going to put a little drop of water with it and just see what uh, what that does to it. So let's see what the nose is like now. Touch more green fruit maybe, um, some gooseberry. Not quite so intense, not quite so overtly juicy, um, a little bit more barley, there's a touch more peat now as well. But even so, that is still really, really delightful. Let's see what the pass like now. A lot more oak now, less juicy, less fruity, less interesting with a little drop of water um, it's a little bit simplistic now but still you know absolutely wonderful and you know neat yeah oh, that's damn good tonight, right okay so let's move on to the Gordon. so this is 31 years old let's see what uh, the nose gives us on this end shall we classic grain um, quite coffeed, uh, lots of dried fruit, um, 
sultana, raisin, a little bit of violet. All starting to move in a slightly rummy kind of direction. Nice graininess to it, touch of coconut and vanilla. Coffee builds quite pleasantly, it has to be said. Um, and it's, it's showing some lovely maturity. I mean, as, as we well know, grain whiskies can age forever and a day. And um, realistically, sort of, you know, mid-twenties is, is probably the sort of point you want to start considering bottling them. So this is certainly, you know, in that, that sort of uh, period of time. And um, I like that. That's gorgeous. I mean, I love old grains anyway. You know, I still think that they're... Um, uh, underappreciated yes they can be a little bit simplistic but then god so can bloody malt um you know and, and uh you know of course you need really good quality oak um for, for um aging your uh, grain whiskey in because of the larger amount of oak character that the the spirit is going to pick up um a little bit of wood smoke now yeah that's that's really nice and for 63 percent i'm not getting an alcohol prickle whatsoever it's quite quite surprising let's see what the parts like now quite soft quite gentle elegant slightly rummy dried fruits dried apricot Sultana, a little bit of raisin kind of coming through on the end, touch of wood smoke. Um, got that lovely kind of grainy, almost grainy spiciness which kind of like you know makes the, 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 the tongue tingle. Obviously that is partly down to the alcohol as well, but that's got a lovely vibrancy on the finish. And and to be frank, you you'd be hard pushed to say that was over over 60%. It is so well integrated and um, there's a little bit of cocoa, a little bit of, of um, coconut on the finish, and um, that I think is absolutely superb. I'm really, really loving that, as they say. Um, and um, I'll put a little drop of water with it. Don't think it really. I mean, you know, putting water with, with your whiskey is, is again all kind of personal taste, and I suppose maybe it's because I do taste an awful lot of cast strength samples. My palate has sort of turned into a bit more. Uh, bit of old leather possibly um, and uh, I, I find I can quite happily drink that without any water at all but anyway um, more of the American oak now I'm getting a lot more coconut a lot more vanilla a lot more toffee the grain has kind of like shrunk back a bit I'm still getting some dried fruit but certainly is is brought forward the oak um, on the nose and quite quite a bit of, oak, of wood smoke as well. Let's see what the power's like now. Mmm, unctuous, juicy. Mmm, sort of sun-dried raisins and sultanas and a little bit of wood smoke. Um, a little bit of coconut. I mean, that is just so wonderfully harmonious. Um, a really juicy and really mouth-filling. Um, so I guess it's a case of how would you want to drink this? You know, if you drunk it neat, you're going to get that, that intense sort of um, grainy spiciness. Um, if you put a bit of water with it, it all kind of mellows out and becomes a lot, lot more juicier. It's just kind of like, you know, horses for courses, I suppose. We can Okay, so let's move on to the 29-year-old spickers. Let's see what uh, uh, the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Mmm, that's good. Um, quite robust, um, full, mature, really well-balanced, lovely combination of European and American oak. Um, touch of fruit cake, some dusty vanilla, you know, that sawdusty old American oak kind of character. You can just sense 
the grain component underneath the surface is adding a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a bite, a little bit of crispness. But that's really aromatic and it's it's elegant um, and it's got some lovely maturity to it as well. The, 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 the sherry notes really do give it a sort of a, a wonderfully juiciness and a wonderful sort of dried fruit character. It kind of, you know, it's all really nicely put together. Um, and again, you know, what am I retailing this at? About 72 quid, I think, you know, and, and you know, some people have gone for it. I uh, still have some of my allocation left. So, um, again, you know, this is just wonderfully mature, but it still has that vibrancy as well. Um, it's not sort of like, you know, too old or um, what have you. It's certainly à point, as the French would say. Anyway, let's uh, see what the palette gives us. So it kind of kicks off with the American oak. I'm getting the dusty American oak, apricot, malt. And then it kind of moves into the sherry notes, dried fruit, a little bit of spice. And then the grain kind of comes through on the, on the end. Again, it's all wonderfully mature, um, wonderfully structured. The oak has really done a great job with this. It's got uh, just such a, a, a lovely kind of feel, mouthfeel. Um, it's got some lovely fruit, it's got sort of, you know, a touch of mm, salinity, minerality, you know, that kind of thing. A um, little bit of spice, some juicy fruit. Mm, quite a chewy finish as well. It kind of, the progression is, is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, you know, you, you move through the American oak, into the sherry, into the grain. Um, and then it's just sort of like, just lingers, you know, you, you get elements of each um, lingering right at the finish um, with a quite a chewy sort of almost kind of cocoa powdery kind of aftertaste. I think that is absolutely stunning and uh, I think um, Ian's picked up some great casks there, so... Mm. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Vega now. I guess, to a certain extent, you could say Ian's made a rod for his own back with regards to the, the Vega bottling, having um, released some, you know, exceptionally good uh, Vegas over the last uh, couple of years. So, this has got quite a lot to live up to. Let's see what the nose gives us. The PX is very, very obvious. It's dense, it's whiny. Juicy, pruney, there's nuts, there's heather. There is a, I'm getting a touch of American oak. It's, it's very sort of PX sherry centered, it has to be said. Um, there's a touch of herbal sherry notes. Um, touch of coffee. It's got a lovely vibrancy, I'll give it that. I mean, you know, this is not... I mean, this is a lovely whiskey. It is very, very impressive, and I know a lot of you will love it. Um, I, I'm just finding the, the PX to be a tad too dominant. Um, but like I say, it's got lovely vibrancy, it's got complexity, it's got a you know, nice, almost kind of minerality to it. Um, and I, I have absolutely no issue with selling this, and um, funnily enough, I have sold all my allegation. Um, so please don't send me an email asking if I've got any bottles spared because I haven't. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I like that. I mean, I think that is, that is a very, very impressive nose. Um, like I said, my only um, reservation, I guess, is the wrong word, is that, that the PX is a little too dominant. But, yeah, apart from that, I think um, not, not too shabby, as I say. Let's see what the power's like. Wow, that's a spicy finish. It has to be said, cinnamon and ginger, 
dark chocolate but it kicks off slightly lighter um, there's a little bit more lead time should we say on the American oak kind of character before the PX moves in with the, the dried fruits and walnuts, fig, prune, raisin that kind of character um, oh, but I love that finish I mean that lovely vibrant spiciness um, it's almost got a, a, a almost chilli hotness um, there's a lovely citric note that kind of runs all the way through that um, there's there's some some lovely dried fruits as well uh, and it's really long and the, the finish just is is a kind of an, an amalgam of the American oak and and the PX and it's I think that the palette just shows a little bit better balance between the two different cast types um, Oh, that, that's it. You know, I'd buy that for that spicy finish on its own, it has to be said. I mean, that was, that was a, a lovely finish. Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Um, firstly, a big, big thank you to Ian for the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, like I said, you know, if, if independent bottlers and distillers and what have you <laughs> send the samples out, I wouldn't be wouldn't be in the position to do an episode of the show and I'd probably the shelves would be bare because I wouldn't be stocking anything but um, it's it, I, I really appreciate the support that uh, the, the companies give us so um, let's review uh, the fat can um, you know it's not the worst fat can I've ever had in my life the, the drawback to it is it's too expensive for me, um, I mean, I would have had to have put that on the shelf at around about 60 quid and I couldn't see myself um, suggesting a customer purchased it for that kind of money. If it had been a lot less, if we'd have been looking at, say, maybe 45, 47, yeah, I could have, I could have lived with that because it's not majorly complex. It's not the greatest feta can in the world. It's not the worst. Um, but it's not bad um, and um, you know there are a lot of people that love Fetter Can will probably you know buy this and well if you do then um, they're good <laughs> um, so uh, the Orkney well you know I think you know to me that is absolutely the star of the show I think that is just brilliant value for money you know like I said you know nobody went for it even though I put on when I sent the email out, I said, you know, this is stunning, this is brilliant, all words to that kind of effect. And nobody went, yeah, oh God, yeah, I'll have to have a bottle of that. Nobody. And, well, you're going to bloody well miss out, because that is stunning. Um, the Invergordon. Um, yeah, lovely old grain, you know, it kind of ticks all the, all the boxes. Um, lovely balance. Um, alcohol is well contained uh, neat and then it's a case of how do you like it do you like it with that sort of spicy kind of um, grainy intensity or do you like it a little bit more mellow the only reason I choose not to sort of go for this is that um, as much as I love old grain whiskies, they do tend to sit on the shelf for quite a period of time it has to be said and and I've already got a fair few on the shelf and I just didn't really need another old grain but you know if that sounds like it's your kind of cup of tea and you can pick yourself up a bottle then then you know you are not going to be disappointed um, the spicker I thought was absolutely superb um, really lovely balance um, good complexity uh, good evolution good sort of yeah, just good you know at the end of the day really very very impressive and um you know like i said we've long gone beyond the point of of um you know sticking our nose in the air at uh, blended whiskey because you know like i've always said you know if you have quality ingredients you get a quality cake at the end of it you know so simple as that in my opinion um, and the Vega, okay, yeah, uh, I know a lot of you have bought it, although a lot of you are going to go nuts for it, because I know a lot of you love sherry, and well, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's good whiskey, you know, uh, I've certainly, you know, got no issues with it whatsoever, uh, like I said, the nose was maybe a little bit too heavy on the PX for my own personal taste, I thought maybe the palate just showed a little bit better balance for me, um, 
But either way, I mean, it was, you know, a quality product. So whoever sort of originally put that blend together certainly knew what they were doing, shall we say. Um, and um, I'm sure those of you that have purchased a bottle are going to, uh, going to really enjoy it. So, so yeah, there you go. That's uh, Series 7 uh, from North Star in the bag. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, this week's episode of the show. Um, don't quite know what I'm going to be doing next week, actually. I mean, I've still got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six... I've got seven episodes sort of like stashed down here ready to go. Um, so, I don't know, God knows. It'll just be whatever I feel like doing, I think, um, come midweek, I think. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the show. Um, and so what's left to say is good afternoon and good running.